All right, so somebody's wife is interested in learning how to code. So the husband here, he put some questions to me about it, so I'm going to answer. All right, so I'm a graphic designer, 20 years experience. My wife is a teacher, but is ready to quit. She is showing little interest in coding. She's showing a little bit of interest in coding, but I am unable to answer some very fundamental questions. So was wondering if you would consider making a video for people that know absolutely zero about coding. She's asked me, well, she put to me, she put to me the following questions. So uh, number one, how do I know what type of coding I want to get into and why? Ah, very good. Well, you're not going to really know what type of coding you want to get into until you learn a little bit about coding. It's kind of like learning how to drive a car. Like you don't know what car you really want until you've driven a few cars, you know, drive a sports car, drive a convertible, drive an SUV. Then you're going to have a much better idea of the type of coding you want to do. So what I do in my mentoring program, shameless self-promotion, um, we have people run through what I characterize as the key fundamentals. So I teach you HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, PHP, Python, SQL, and databases, and a bunch more. Once you go through the material, you will have developed what I call the nerd eyes, the ability to discern the landscape of development of coding. So once you've gone through those fundamentals, which are universal in terms of their application, meaning they work with just about every language and everything that you could do, they give you that foundation you'll be able to choose what type of specialized coding which you may want to do. So you may want to do Node.js, you may want to do React, you may want to do WordPress development, you may want to do front end with uh, vanilla HTML and CSS and JavaScript, you may want to do full stack. Anyway, all these things, I'm assuming if you're a beginner, you don't know what I'm talking about, you will once you get through those fundamentals. So the key is not to be so concerned about the ultimate job now, the key right now is just to learn the basics, the fundamentals, and uh, then you'll know exactly what kind of coding that's good for you. Because some coding is very visual, some coding is more broad architectural, some is very detail-oriented. So depending on your personal likes and dislikes, your psychology, you may like A, B, or C. Even comes down to the type of jobs. Certain languages, like C Sharp and Java as an example, in those, in those two situations, you're probably going to be working for very large organizations, where if you're doing WordPress installs with PHP uh, and JavaScript, much more likely you're going to be working with small, maybe medium-sized business. So that plays a role as well. What are some simple examples of what a client might hire me to do as a freelance programmer? So freelancing, 99% of freelancing, Okay, 97% of freelancing is probably web-based. That means HTML5, CSS3, some JavaScript, probably PHP. PHP is king of freelance. So you're going to be doing a lot of WordPress work. You might be doing some uh, Shopify work. You may be doing some uh, old, working on a lot of old legacy code. If it's out there, there's a lot of that out there. Or you might have to integrate with Stripe or PayPal. Um, who knows? Is it, you may work on Drupal sites. There's all kinds of different things. The best way you could characterize freelance programming is that A, you're going to be working for small businesses. B, you're going to be working on projects that might last uh, two weeks, two months. Whereas if you work on enterprise, big projects, you may work on those things for years. So there's a lot of turnover with freelance. So it's a little bit more fun, perhaps. And with freelance, there's a lot of flexibility. So uh, you have a lot more control over what you do. When you go work for a large corporation, they usually say, you're going to be doing it in Java, and you're going to be using this library here, and you're going to be using this app server here, and that's it. That's what you do. Whereas when you're freelancing, a lot more flexibility, a lot more variability there. So it's more, uh, if you're a free bird, if you like flexibility and freedom, freelance will probably be for you. So what the client may exactly hire you to do depends. But again, it's going to be web usually. So HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, PHP, some database stuff. Um, you might get a little bit of mobile work to do, native iOS, native Android. But generally speaking, it's web. Question number three. I'm learning, if, excuse me, if learning and practicing 40 hours a week, when might I be able to earn some decent money? 
Well, I actually recommend uh, you do about, in the beginning anyway, so you get those synapses forged in your head. Um, in the beginning, you want to do maybe three to four hours a day max, uh, four to five days a week. So when I'm talking about forging the synapses in your brain, in your head, um, you have to create those new neural connections so that your brain will start understanding all that coding stuff. One day, when you start, it's like it'll be like a, a misty thing. It'll be like, oh, I don't understand all this stuff. And then one day you'll wake up and you go, oh, now I understand. And that's because the new neural connections are formed. So uh, frequency of exposure is very important, meaning a little bit every day. Um, the, most people, they can operate at maximum cognitive capacity of three to four hours. And then you need downtime. So, you know, 40 hours, if you can do it, that's great. You'll get there pretty fast. For my curriculum, the core curriculum, the fundamental curriculum, you're looking at about 125 to 150 hours of work, to give you an idea. Um, some people are able to get jobs within three months. Some people take six months or longer. It really depends on your aptitude. It depends on uh, how consistent you are. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So 40 hours is pretty ambitious, but it's doable. It would be pretty quick. I say, simply in a nutshell, three months before you get your very first gig, um, that'd be fast. I've known people who do it, but it could be longer as well. I've had people take longer, depending on uh, a lot of different things. So there you go. I hope that helps. So the guy says, on a side note, my wife is insanely good at problem solving logic and math. I've been pushing her to get into coding for years, but I haven't been able to explain things well enough to sell her. All right. So, yeah, that's cool. So your wife might be in a real good position because to be a good coder, you have to be, it's not so much about math. It's about problem solving and breaking down complexity. And that's what teachers do to a certain extent. And it's also about good communication skills. The number two thing that recruiters look for in uh, candidates for coding jobs is whether or not they have good communication skills because you know you're, you're working with other people as a developer whether you're freelancing or working at a job so she'd probably be in a pretty good position what i would suggest for her is uh, start learning a little bit every day frequency of exposure is more important than the ultimately how much time you put into it to to a great extent so if your brain sees coding every day four or five days a week or more, your brain will start to get the message, hey, I better learn this stuff. But if it only sees it once or twice a week, your brain's like, oh, this again? Eh, we don't see it often. It can't be that important. So you want to expose yourself consistently to coding. This will speed up the process. So it starts off a little slow and then speeds up quite a bit. Ultimately, with my mentoring program, I want to get you to the point as quickly as possible so you can get your foot in the door, get that entry-level job, because in that first entry-level job where you will be paid to learn is where you will learn a lot. So that's why you see the salaries really ramp up a lot in the first uh, year or three in the coding game. Although you can circumvent that quite a bit if you know what you're doing with, regard, with regards to freelancing. But that's another story. All right. I hope you found this useful.